Welcome, kids, to Writing and Graphing Inequalities for Algebra 1. Now, I know they're not your favorite, uh, but inequalities are actually really important because they have lots of real-world applications. We say words like at least and at most all the time in regular conversation. You have maxima and minima, um, you know, a maximum number of people you can fit in the gym, for example, a minimum number of students who can uh, participate to have a club. I mean, these are, these are words we use, so we need to be able to deal with inequalities just like we deal with equations. So let's jump right in. So an inequality is a mathematical sentence that compares expressions and it contains one of these symbols, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And remember that you read them based on what's on the left-hand side of the symbol, based on the way that the left-hand side sees the um, expression. To write an inequality, look for the following phrases. So you'll have is less than or is fewer than for less than, is greater than or is more than for greater than, and then less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, this, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you have to think a little bit about what you're hearing in the phrase that they give you. Okay, so we're going to write an inequality for a situation, and I want you to remember to ask yourself two questions when you're writing an inequality. Can it be equal, and is it more or less? So these are the questions you ask yourself. So let's think about this one. The temperature in... Minot, or Mino maybe, Minot, North Dakota, has never been below negative 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, negative 36 degrees Fahrenheit is terrifyingly low, but it's never been below that. So the temperature T, so we're going to put our T in our inequality, um, has never been below negative 36. That, that says to me that it has been equal to negative 36. So let me put in my negative 36 on the right-hand side. I'm going to put my underline in my symbol because if it tells me it's never been below that, what I must assume is that it may have at some point reached that temperature. So if it's never been below that, then it has to have been, this is that second question, greater than, more than that. It's never been below it, it must be greater than. So we have the inequality t is greater than or equal to negative 36. So for the graphing portion, which is the next step we're getting into here, we got to think about the number negative 36, so let's find where that would be. So it would be right about here-ish on our number line. And we have to think about whether or not our, our value in question, in this case t, whether or not it can be equal to 36, and we've already established that it can. So what we do is we put our circle at negative 36, but we fill it in. So I'm doing mine kind of exaggerated because I want to point out what kind of circle I'm showing. So it's a shaded in circle. And then we have the graph that goes greater than. So there's lots of different ways you can do this. Now my traditional way personally is to swiggle, swiggle, swiggle all the way across my number line and then fill in my arrow nice and big so I can tell the difference between this little dinky arrow over here which does not include the graph and this big gigantic arrow over here which does include the graph right here. Okay, so let's look at some more graphs. So each of these four graphs is one of um, the four basic inequalities. Let me move this over a little bit. It's a little, little too far over. Give myself a little more space. There we go. And I'll write over here to the right. Lock that into place. We'll write over here to the right. All right, so we have our four inequalities. And let's just go ahead and put our variable in for each one. We know we have an x. And we know that the number in question for every inequality here is a positive 1. So now I just have to look at the type of circle and whether it's greater than or less than. So the type of circle we have in the first one is greater than or equal to because, and I know this because it's shaded in, okay, and it's shaded up, greater than or equal to, because it's filled in. So this solution set here does include the number 1, that's why it's shaded in, the underline, and then greater than, so greater than or equal to. Next one, well it's not filled in, so we do not have our underline, but it's still just greater than, because we do not have this number shaded in. The one is not shaded into my solution set, only what's bigger than 1. Now think about what makes that true then. That means that numbers like 1.001, that will make it true, or even, that would be 1 in 1,000th, how about 1 in 1 millionth, let's see, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, um, ten thousandths, millionths, one millionth, one and one millionth, still included in the solution set, just nothing that is exactly equal to one or less than one. Next solution set, we have, again, a 1. This time, it can be equal because you see the filled-in circle. And we have what is less than or equal to 1. 
So finally, we have x is less than 1. So get familiar with your symbols and get familiar with your different types of graphs so that you can graph the inequalities correctly. Please note, however, that I am not very particular about such long graphs. I am perfectly fine, say for A, choice A up there at the top. This is the graph that I would expect, a minimum graph I would expect. It would have a 0, 1, and a 2. The number in question in the center, there's the 1, 1 less, 1 more. And then you would put on your, your circle of whatever type this time filled in and shade it up. So you do not have to draw an inequality line, a number line that includes um, all the way up to and down to negative to positive 10, or in this case, like negative 4, positive 4. We don't need any of that. We just need right around the number in question in the inequality. That way we know that you know how to number a number line and that you can show me what kind of circle and what kind of shading we have. <clears throat> Okay, a solution of an inequality is a value that makes the inequality true. So a value you could plug in for the variable. An inequality can have more than one solution. Most of the time it will. The set of all solutions of an inequality is called its solution set. So they give us an inequality x plus 3 is less than or equal to 7, and they've given me three values here of x. So in order to tell if that's a solution of the inequality, plug it into the inequality, do the math, and then determine whether it works, as in the case of the first two, or if it doesn't in the case of the third one. So no, 5 does not fit my inequality, only this, you know, the first two numbers they gave us fit our inequality in this case. All right, let's jump right in and let's try some problems then. All right, so start with number 1. Would an open or closed circle be used in the graph of the inequality k is less than 250? Well, let's think it out for a minute. All right, so we have for number 1, we have k is less than 250. So on my graph of my um, inequality here, I'd have my 250 here in the center, 249, one less, 251, one more. Okay, very inconvenient kind of number to put on a number line, but if you only have to put on three notches on the number line, then it's not bad. Can K be equal to 250? No, because K is less than 250. So you'd have an open circle there, and you would shade downward. And you would shade downward. So in that case, you would have an open circle because k is not equal to 250, just greater than. All right, number two, which is different, right? Both inequalities. So we have two uh, inequal or two apparently two different inequalities. We just have to read through here and figure out what we have. W is greater than or equal to negative 7. And then we have W is no less than negative 7. W is at least negative 7 and W is no more than negative 7. All right, so this first one here, greater than or equal to, is greater than or equal to negative 7. That one's very straightforward because you have um, the words greater than or equal to in there. This next one down, W is no more than negative 7. Well, ask yourself your two questions. If it's, not, if, um, if it's no more than negative 7, could it be negative 7? Yes, it could. It just can't be more, so it must be less. So that one is W is less than or equal to negative 7. How about w, if no, w is no more than negative 7 is there, this one is w is no less than negative 7. Well, could it be negative 7? Yes, it could. It just can't be less, so it's greater than or equal to. And finally, at least. At least. I like to take at least out of that phrase and put it into a phrase that, um, that makes your brain come alive a little bit more, like, I, I want at least 50 bucks for my birthday this year. Well, would you be happy with 50? Yeah, you'd be fine with 50. But if you want at least, you really want what? You really want more. So you'd be fine with it. That's your equal to, but you really want more. So you have one different inequality. The one that was different was this one right down here. The W is no more than negative 7 was the only one that was different. Next one. Do X is greater than or equal to negative 9 and... Negative 9 is greater than or equal to x represent the same inequality. Well, I can already hear you guys hollering out your answers. Well, absolutely not. No, they do not. Because if you take the um, second one and you flip it around, use that kind of symmetric property, and there is a symmetric property of inequalities, you can see that it indeed is not the same thing as x is greater than or equal to negative 9. Okay, let's keep moving. And we have some more here, so let's go ahead and write these word sentences as inequalities. So number six, a number x is no less than negative four. So put in your x, put in your negative four. If our number is not less than negative four, could it be equal to negative four? Well, yes, it could. It just can't be less, so it is greater. 
Let's go ahead and draw the graph for that. Sketch the graph for that real quick as well. Remember to put your negative 4 in the center. And this is a good shot for me to get an idea of who remembers how to number a number line correctly and who doesn't. Remember that 1 down from negative 4 is negative 5, and 1 up from negative 4 is negative 3. Now what kind of um, circle am I going to have for this one? That's right, closed. Closed circle. Closed circle because our inequality says that we can equal the negative 4. But it's really greater than. All right, next one, number 7. A number y added to 5.2, so let's put that in there, is less than 23. So that's a good one. That's nice and straightforward. I'm not going to make you do a graph for that one quite yet. Number 8. A number b multiplied by negative 5. Well, multiplied by uh, b multiplied by negative 5 we know is negative 5b is at most negative 3 fourths. At most. Well, could it be equal to negative 3 fourths? Yes, the most it can be is negative 3 fourths, so it can be equal. But if that's the most that it can be, it's really going to be what? Less. That's right, it's going to be less. So that's your inequality for number 8, um, which I am not going to make you graph either. Number 9. A number k minus 8.3, that's nice and straightforward, is greater than 48. Well, that's good. That's easy. So when it literally has the words is greater than, you know which direction it's supposed to go. And the last one, oh, let's make a numbers consistent there. The last one, number 10, describe and correct the error in writing the word sentence as an inequality. And they have twice a number C is at least negative 49, or 4 ninths, negative 4 ninths. Well, what they've done incorrectly here is they have the wrong inequality um, symbol. Uh, twice a number C is at least negative 4 ninths. Well, can it be equal to negative 4 ninths? Yes, it can. The least it can be is that, so it could be equal to that. But it's really going to be what? If it's the least it could be, it's really going to be more. That's right. So that's their mistake. That inequality symbol is wrong. All right, so we reviewed a little bit of graphing. We reviewed a little bit of writing inequalities. I don't think this is going to be an overly challenging topic for us. We are going to pre-assess it, see where we are with this. But I don't think this video ended up too long at all. Go back and review. Remember that you need to um, know how to figure out what phrase um, is telling you what for an inequality. Words like at least, like this one or um, no less than, at most, those are important phrases for us to recognize. No need to memorize the table. Remember to ask yourself those two questions. All right, guys, hope you had a nice night. See you in class.